Good afternoon and welcome to Center for Spiritual Living Ocala. My name is Norma Anderson and I'm one of the practitioners here at the center. And I'd like to welcome you all um, that are watching live and those that will be watching later on our you know, recorded session. Um, and know that we are a center that is welcome to everyone and we enjoy you guys you know, popping in and viewing what we have to show every week. So with that, I think we would go over our um, values, and they're they're on the screen. We get it. and this is these we've asked our center, you know, the attendants, what values that they hold dear, and these are the top ten that we came up with, or the top nine. The first one being spiritual growth and practice, and then of course there's love, appreciation, community freedom, creativity, health and wholeness, generosity, and financial well-being. And then we have some a mission that is to provide spiritual tools for personal and global transformation. And our purpose is to awaken the humanity to its spiritual magnificence. And I really resonate with that. Let me repeat that. Our purpose is to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence. Magnificence, and we know that that is all you know inside us. And people need to come alive and recognize that within themselves. So now, vision is a world that works for everyone. And so now I'm going to bring in our other practitioner, Donna Davis, to do her wonderful connection with the divine through spiritual mind treatment. Hi, Donna. Hi, how are you? Very good. Nice to be able to be on today with you in a different part of the podcast. It's kind of cool. <laughs> so yes, by all means, let's go ahead and get centered. I invite you now to just take a deep breath in, filling your lungs with air allowing for the expansion to happen within you. Today's conversation, we're talking about and having this purpose today of connecting to the magnificence, no matter what path we decide to take. And as we breathe in and out, allowing for that energy that is us to breathe the body, I recognize that this wonderful life energy that I call God is everywhere. It is in the very rain that is going on outside. It is the air I breathe. It is the sun that shines after the rain. It is all of life pulsating in the rainforest and the very depths of the ocean. It is where I am sitting in this chair. I too am a part of the one. I too am a part of life living and breathing, represented as me. It is from that place of connection and knowing that I speak my word now, this word that says that because God and I are one, then my path is assured. My choices are made from a place of love. I am whole and perfect and complete because I am one with the creator itself. I know that if it's true for me, it's true for everybody else. And we simply have to line our vibration up to that which is the one so that we may see God everywhere in everything. I know now that this is true, that I am seeing God duplicated, multiplied as my neighbors, my friends, strangers, my dog, children, humanity, animals, the cosmos, all of it, I see God everywhere. I'm so grateful for this knowing. I'm grateful for this teaching. I am grateful for the ever-expanding 
awareness that is coming into fruition right now in the human race. I'm grateful for life itself. And so I release this into the law, knowing that it's already done. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Good morning or good afternoon, Donna. Good afternoon. <laughs> Hold on, pop in and say hello. Oh, <laughs> so uh, thank you. Thank you. I am grateful for you. And I'm so grateful for Norman. I'm going to bring her on in here. Hi. Hello. Let's show this up a different way here. Oh, how's that? Yay. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you, ladies. I'm getting a little reverb. Are you getting that too? Yeah, a little bit. I wonder what that is. I don't know if it's me or, or what, but anyway, anyway, thank you ladies for being on board today. We did things a little bit different. You know, we like to change things up every once in a while. And so thank you for just jumping in and saying yes. I appreciate you. And Reverend Cindy asked me to respond. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. You know, we started rolling with this thing, right? You know, as COVID happened, I'm gonna hang on. Let me do mute for a second and see if that helps any. Okay, are we still? We're not hearing that reverb anymore. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to do that. Maybe just taking us off one at a time. Let the person speaking that's speaking. Um. Anyway, anyway. So our theme for this month, for our global theme, is One Journey, Many Paths. And that's the theme of the overall organization. And sometimes I roll with the theme, sometimes I don't. But I think um, I'd really like to do that this year, is to just go with the theme that everybody else is, is doing. Uh, we all have a choice to do that or not. But I think there's power in doing that when we as an organization all come together and you know we're talking about the same thing. Um, I think there is power in that. So I'm excited to, to do that. And also um, that I'm participating in creating the 22 2022 um, talks for next year. So that's really exciting. So anyway, I just thank you both for, for joining me and for having this conversation. I think it makes it more rich and more um, applicable for people if they can hear these ideas from some different perspectives. And you ladies as our practitioners and people who live and breathe this teaching and this work, I mean, who better to share with than you guys? Wow, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I love you, love you. And we don't usually have the Norma's presence during these mm -hmm. talks, so that's really awesome as well to have Norma joining us. Glad to be here. Awesome, so I'm gonna bring up the, uh, the idea for this month, and let me pull it up here. We are encouraged to move from thinking about the divine to feeling it and experiencing it by way of the mystical experiences that transcend any one path, religion, or tradition, one mountain with many paths, one tree with many branches, one river with many wells. And so today, specifically, um, the talk is... Uh, is one journey, many paths. So I just wonder, you know, what does that mean for, for each one of you? Maybe we'll start with uh, with Uma, since you're off. What, is, what did that mean for you, that idea of one, one journey, many paths? Well, I think for me personally, is there an echo on mine? Um, I think that the one journey that we all have, no matter which religion, domination, denomination, uh, ideology, is the path to personal self-enlightenment. You know, some people use religion, some people use, you know, many other different avenues, but we're all trying to get to the same, you know, the same point. And, you know, I think that's kind of what Ernest Holmes had in mind when he developed his uh, ideologies and the theologies. It's not even really a theology, but, you know, 
something that can be incorporated in any walk of life, any religion, anything to arrive at that, that place. Yeah, thanks, Norma. Thank you. I, I, I agree. Saying I can't unmute my guest. Donna, you want to dive in there? Yeah, I'm going to Norma to mute. <laughs> well, you know, the thing of it all, when we start diving into our connection with the oneness, I think that that's what it is. We come from this beautiful source, and then the whole time we're trying to find source as we look and try to reconnect with it. So we use all these different tools and that's why it's many paths. And it's okay if somebody, I mean, somebody who is atheist, for example, can still use these teachings, you know, because there's this feeling of I'm a part of the world. I'm one piece, but I'm part of the world. Yeah. You know, at any moment you can't just say, let me just take myself out of the world. We're in the world. We're all in it. <laughs> so I can see where, <laughs> you know, that would be, okay, I can use some of it, you know? So I just feel like it's the, what I love the most about this teaching is that you can come from all these different backgrounds and come from all taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that and a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then foraging your own path forward. And you get, you are the one that get to rattle around the ideas in your head and say, does this work for me in the laboratory of my life? Does it work? And if it works, then great. And if it doesn't, then pick another path. Yeah. I have to say, I, I love that too about our teaching. And that was one of the things that grabbed my attention the first time I showed up at the center. I talked about it when Reverend Peggy was with us the other day, because that was my, my introduction was with Reverend Peggy and how she spoke from the Bible and she spoke from the Bhagavad Gita. And I think she even mentioned Star Wars or something. And I was like, whoa, that is so cool. To, to find all those common strands between all these different religions, but not just religion, also in science and in philosophy. And because I was a science major in college. And so I was hearing the same thing. They use different words, right? We use different words as scientists versus, you know, a, a theologist, but we're really describing the same thing from our, you know, our different vantage points. And like you said, Donna, you could be an atheist and still get something out of this, this teaching. And, uh, and I personally love that. You know, when I think about this idea of um, one journey, many paths, to me, I think the journey is, is what, you, what you all have said, right? That idea that we find that oneness, that higher power within ourselves. You know how people would say so and so is out finding themselves, and you know I can remember my family saying that one of my cousins went off to India or something, and they would joke that she went off to find herself, like she was lost. You know what what the heck does that mean? But you know that idea for me to to find yourself is is that coming full circle that we look outside for the answers to our problems and what's going on in our lives when really the answers are inside of us that we can ask that higher self and and so much of life is just coming to trust that inner voice more than what you're trusting from outside you know so that's been that's been my journey i don't you know i think i'll bring you all in we're all meeting ourselves so just jump in when you want to add to it i think that a lot of people nowadays are kind of feeling that same way because mains for one mainstream churches that are looking for sheep, their numbers are dwindling. You know, people are becoming thinkers and following and trying to find out what is true for them. And so they're doing the inner work and they're first figuring out who they are to know what it is that feels right for them. So I think it's 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 much on a broader scale than we even, you know, are doing with the CSL uh, ministries. Yeah, and that's exactly it, because it's not just CSL, new thought in general, old religion. I mean, all of it's saying the same thing, even very deep. They're saying that there's a connection to something, but they didn't say, oh, well, you know, a lot of times there's that feeling of I'm separate of it and you want to get closer, you know, mirror my God to thee. I'm trying to get closer, <laughs> you know, but there's this realization that then comes upon you that says I am now connected to the one when I'm in that presence, you know, and we just use different languages. That's all. 
Yeah. But all of it's that same journey of connecting to that inner peace, that peace that passes all understanding that comes over you and connects you in such a way that you just know you're in the presence. And that's the same thing as connecting to the higher self. Yeah. Yeah, well, we can do it all in, in different ways, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever it is that, that brings you joy, whatever it is that gives you that sense of, of being part of something bigger, right? That thing that makes you feel like you're living your purpose. You know, it's like to give ourselves permission to feel that. I think that's what what they're saying in, in the statement. Um, let me let me pull that up again here. Is it this one? Yeah, that we're encouraged to move from thinking about the divine to actually feeling it and experiencing it. Right. So so what does it mean to to feel it, to experience it? What does that feel like? And it feels like walking in Shalom Park. Ah, yeah. You know, like getting under the trees and looking up. It feels like when we gather together and we have song and food and hug each other. It feels like when we visit the baby that was just born. It feels like when we get on a Zoom call and connect over the internet, to the magic of internet. It feels like all of it. Yeah. And it's the thing, that's that diving into the presence. And for us to realize that it's everywhere. We say yeah. it in treatment, you know, God, that's the first step. God's everywhere. Right. Now, you know, I, I know um, for myself, right, growing up in a, in a more traditional kind of a faith, um, the idea of saying that we could embody God was like heresy. You know, the first time I walked into a unity church and they said, Father, Mother, God, I was like looking around like, holy cow, I hope I'm not going to get hit by lightning walking out of this place because these people just said some stuff that is you know, <laughs> I had never heard. I thought just listening to that, I was in trouble, you know, to like equate yourself and say that, you know, I am God expressing that. That's a big deal for some people. Now, I don't know. You know, I, I know Norma came from it from a different tradition as well. You want to speak to that? Norma? Yeah, of course. I came of um, one of the most traditional as you. They're, they're kind of neck and neck on the, the dogma, just their own set of it. But it was a whole lot of you know, like, again, I keep referring to the sheep because they are proud of that. You know, you are one of my sheep. You have to be a sheep, you know, sheep, 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 sheep. Sheeps follow. Sheeps don't even really think, as the one quote said, you know, stop thinking, you know, stop thinking and feeling. A lot of people don't even get to the thought process. They just do as they've been told for eons. So when you start going within and all that stuff that you've been taught as a child or a young person, you know, it starts to not make sense. It starts to shake things up inside of you. And I think that's where the feelings come in because it's starting to see, okay, this moves me. What was told to me before didn't move me. So you start to go down that path and follow where those breadcrumbs start to leave you, I think. So yeah, it's, it's quite different from the way I was brought up. So Norma, what did it take for you to break out of that? Well, I can't say that I was 100% a full sheep. Uh, <laughs> I guess this is my personality. So I kind of always had my eye on one, you know, my, my, my looking at cockeyed, you know. Um, but I didn't really stray until all the things that they kept beating into me and trying to tell me that this was the right way and this is the path and this is what I should do. It just didn't go along with what I felt was right for myself. So I, you know, and I'm not one to sit back and wait for people to do things to me. So I just kind of told them, your ideology doesn't work for me. I don't need to meet with your group of leaders to decide if what is working for me or not. I'm out. <laughs> and then I just kind of, you know, searched for what right. was my next to be. Yeah. Nice. How about you, Donna? Yeah, I had a whole nother different <laughs> thing because for me, I, I was definitely 100% sheep, 100%. I was in it 100% because it was fun and it brought me life and it gave me joy. 
And I was, I loved being in that because that's what I knew growing up. And it connected to me, to my family and all the people that I cared about. So I didn't know that there was a whole nother world because we were always told not to, you know, engage with that whole other world. What I realized though, what was happening was we had this feeling of us versus them. Us, the ones that were chosen and called and them, the ones that don't want to listen. So it's a good kid versus bad kid, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of feeling. But I remember one of the best people in my entire life was my grandmother who said to me, honey, God loves all of his children. All of his children get the same amount of love. That's it. And I thought, okay, if that's the case, unconditional love. I started to dive into the unconditional love part. And then a lot of the dogma no longer served me because it would serve up as not as conditional love. And I'd say, wait a minute, this is not the God that I have come to love and know. And God and I started talking. It was before I was just kind of following what the other person was saying. But once that person said, come, 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 I'll show you how you and God can talk. When I finally started talking to God, I no longer needed to follow that person. And so the way that that person, that person's path that they were taking, I didn't need to take anymore because I had forged my own. And I don't think that that's what ministers would want is for people to connect and really get in direct relationship with God in such a deep way that you're listening to the voice of God. Whatever dogma works for you, works for you. I think that that's what, you know, the good ones want. But there are others in any, you know, profession that may have an agenda. And that's a part of humanity too, because we're asking human beings to share their experiences and then show you from their path how they got to where they're at. And then you have to see them and then you have to dive into that path and they don't. Yeah, but the problem with them teaching you how to fish basically on your own kind of wipes them out of the picture. What do you need them for? Why do you have to come to them for prayer and absolution and all these other things that they're providing if you can do it on your own? So that I think my friend is why we're led or down those paths. And that's also why Jesus was martyred. Because hmm. he was speaking that, he was saying that. He hmm. was empowering people. He was showing them that you don't have to be afraid. You have power. You, this one has power. Yeah. He said, I never said that I was that. You said I was. Right. You know, right. even in that, you know, that was the greatest teachings of, of Christ. And so for me, when I follow those and I dive into the part of that, which was my past and my past religious past, um, when I dive into that, I take the nuggets from that and then say, oh, what did I learn? This is what I learned. And then I found another path that works better for me. It no longer fits me that path because mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm no longer a sheep. I saw that the gate, there was no gate on the other side. <laughs> and it probably took Another one who found that gate on the other side. Yo, everybody come over here. We don't find an opening. You, you remember that little picture? There's a meme where all there's like a gate and the rest of the field is open and all the sheep are going through the one little gate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and in that picture, I thought, there's one little guy over here that's kind of strange looking all, all around. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm not seeing a gate. And he's trying to tell his friends and his friends ain't listening. Mm -hmm. That meme right there is how I felt about CSL. I felt like it was weird, like nobody else in the world was like me. That was like, why can't I celebrate all of this stuff? Why can't I sit in a Buddhist temple and just soak that in? Because it's just such a beautiful thing. Yeah. Because I subscribe to one path, I have to pick one. And CSL lets me be greedy. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, there are lots of us. <laughs> I know. I was so excited when I saw that. We but got all kinds of names. You can call us the strange sheep. You can call us cats, trying to herd cats. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. It's, it's celebrating the spirit that is the humanity that is us. It's yeah. celebrating that. It's allowing us to open our minds and to think. And that's how society moves forward. There are thinkers who get ahead of the game. There are others who get ahead of the game. And then scientists pop in and say, wait a minute, y'all, this is this whole nother world we've discovered. Come on, let me show you. And everybody is forging the, along and we're all doing this together. That's why 
human beings are evolving. And if we want to stay the same we, we were before, I'm not saying we can't look at the past and look at the traditions and say, we honor you, we love you, thank you for what you are, and still practice some of it. But why can't we just still forge forward? Well, I think right now we're being, um, uh, it's not a possibility to go back to what was for a lot of people, right? COVID has changed, changed everything. It changed everything. I mean, literally from people losing jobs and losing loved ones and just ways of life and being that, you know, we're looking at now and saying, there's, there's no way to go back. Even us as spiritual community, right? We had our visioning session last week mm -hmm. and the realization that we're probably not going to come back to CSL Ocala the way it was before COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're already in a different realm, right? The fact that we're having this conversation online right now, mm -hmm. that we're reaching people that we probably never would have reached before, yeah. right? That we've got people now that are part of our community that will never set foot in the physical building. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? How so is it we are able to do that? that. I said, how wonderful is it that we're able to do this? Because if we don't change the way we do things, then we will drop off too. We have to modernize. We have to get into the flow that is moving forward. Humanity is moving on without us. And we can sit and quabble and blah, 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 blah. But it's going. I mean, these kids that are coming in nowadays, I mean, wow. The stuff that they can do, the brain that they have, the, the energy center that they are to be able to vibrate with that level all the time. And these are the ones that are changing our world. They have control of us through Facebook and social media and, you know, and conditioning us exactly how they want. I mean, all this stuff is happening. Why? Because yeah. we can sit and be sheep or we can see what's happening and move with the times. Yeah. Norma, you're on, Paul, you're on mute. Oh, that's why I believe that uh, visioning like we did last week is important practice to continue because we need to figure out as a center, what's our next to be? how do we best serve those that are a part of our center? Because like you said, COVID has changed the game. So we need to figure out who we are now and how we serve best. Yeah. And, you know, I want to say for those people who may be watching for the first time or have not heard what um, visioning is about, you know, to, to let them know, you know, kind of a snapshot of what visioning is the idea that there is this realm of infinite potential and possibility, right? That we talk about scientifically, that, you know, the people of religion are speaking it, right? That same thing that we're all talking about, just using different words, um, and that we're all part of that. And that is the source and substance of everything that exists, if you wanna call it energy or whatever. But in the visioning process, we tap into that right? Get present and be in that space of infinite potential and possibility and see, ask the questions, what is spirit? What is God's? What is the universe's highest picture, highest manifestation of whatever this is? You know, and for our purposes, it was, what is, what is the highest vision for a Center for Spiritual Living Ocala as we move forward? What does that look like? And so as, as we come together as a group, everyone is answering those questions on their own. And then at the end, we do a process where we um, just a debriefing and what came up for everybody in that conversation. And then of course we look for commonalities and things like that. And there are always commonalities, right? So y'all wanna add anything to that, Donna, Norma? You know, it feels like for me when I'm, I'm doing visioning and I drop into that space. It feels like when you're in deep meditation and like, let's say you're writing music and the muse hits, it's that feeling. Oh man, muse hit me. And you know, and then you dive into this thing and then you're taking notes and you're writing feverishly because it's just coming out. It's that connection that it feels like when, when we get into visioning, when we ask that question, it's like tapping into the muse, like the muse happens and then you get to write. And it's not just something that you came up with in your head. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, like it's catching. It's yeah. like the thing is out there, you know, and, and, and you got it, you know, like it, it comes to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was the point I was gonna make. It's not a thought process. 
And that's one of the key um, differences between, um, you know, just trying to figure out what you want to do next or just visioning and opening yourself up to what spirit has for you. Because, you know, we, we can all have a conversation in a circle and say, well, you know, here's what I think we should do and here's what you think we should do. But visioning opens it up and allows spirit to come in and guide and give input on what's the highest and best for whatever it is you're visioning about. Yes, yeah. which is distinct from visioning and from, from envisioning, which is where you start out with, okay, this is like, I want to have a house and I want it to look, you know, with these kind of shutters and these kind of cabinets and you're putting the thought out there versus visioning where you're catching the bigger thought. Yeah. And right. also too, once coming from my story, all the things that is my story, like all my practice, stuff that I've done. So this is my idea. I'm not hearing something is wrong with the sound. Uh -oh. Can you hear me now? Yes, that's better. Okay. No, I said for me, it's like when we tap into the visioning, it's because it, it feels like um, one is coming from my story, you know, my experiences in the past, stuff I've done before. That's when my idea would come because I've seen it before somewhere. Whereas with visioning, it's like I've never seen this before. It's something that just seems to come out of thin air. Yeah. It removes ego out of the picture. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the ideas might come as images, they might come as sounds, they might come as senses and we just write everything down and, and at the end, you know, see if any of it makes sense. Exactly. Cause some of it that you come up that you write on your paper might not make sense to you, but when you speak it aloud and the conversation between everyone, it might come together and say, like, Oh, that's what that was meaning. So, you know, a lot of times it's, it's not even, your thought because it's being downloaded from the divine yeah yeah so it's a really wonderful process one of the tools that we use in centers for spiritual living and uh and i bring it up because um i would i just mentioned that that i wrote one of the talks for this year right for the whole organization so i was asked a couple of weeks ago to participate in doing the 2022 talks and there was a part of me that was really kind of nervous i was like i mean you know, the people who are writing and to imagine putting the themes together in 2019 and then 2020 hit with the pandemic. And it was like, how am I supposed to know how to address that? Right. You have no idea what's coming. How can I think that I could plan anything, you know, that I would be of any service? But it, it's because it's not about me. It's about the idea that we are tapping into the higher power. Right. The bigger plan. So, you know, in thinking about visioning it anyway, it allowed me to say yes to participating in that project for next year, because I don't have to have the answers because it's not about me. I just need to show up. And it was such a just a, a cool reminder and lesson that, that we can all do that, that nine times out of 10, maybe more than that, we have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow or even what's going to happen this evening, much less next year. But we can always know that we have what we need and that we're, we will always have what we need when, you know, when the time arises. Like that's that's the faith piece. I don't have to have all the answers right now. I just have to know that they exist and I can tap into it when I need it. Yeah. You want to add anything? <laughs> I, I, you know, you said it all. I was just about to say that. You don't have the answers. You can tap into it when you need it. And then you said it. <laughs> so I was thinking, and that's an and so it is statement. So it is. <laughs> so it is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. There you go. That's the affirmation. I have what I need when I need it. I don't. I don't have to have all the answers now. I just have to know that it'll be there at that moment. We have. How cool is this? We have someone joining us from Geneva, on our on our feed today. F. Strafford. I think. I'm sure. In fact, that we met last week. <laughs> Again, one of the wonderful things about um, having expanded ourselves through COVID that, you know, here we are in conversing or meeting up with people that are all over the world, all over, not just all over the U.S., but all over the world. It's, it's just incredible. 
And actually one of the personal advantages for us, because every time anybody would ask us to do anything, it was always, no, we got to be at the center. No, we got to be at the center. That was our tether to Ocala. Now we can still be at the center. We can always still be at the center and be in California or be in Geneva, Switzerland, or be whenever, wherever. Yeah. And still be connected to our, our center. It's a beautiful thing. You're muted, Donna. Yes, I just realized. I was like, well, what do you know, one of the things that I loved is when we were out and about doing our thing and we stopped at a, uh, at a CSL and you, you heard the same, you know, talk and the language is the same and it feels very welcoming. Completely different from when you can just kind of tap in to your home center and just be like, hey. And then when you get into town, or let's say you're traveling, for example, you know, one of these like person from Geneva, Switzerland says, hey, man, I might want to go see Ocala, Florida. You never know. <laughs> and they said, hey, guess what? I actually know people in Ocala, Florida. The center is there. And then you show up and it's like no time or space existed. And we already know you because we've seen you online. Yeah, it's it's just a, incredible. Right. So, you know, instead of looking this at the possibilities of, of, you know, 2022 and being scared off, it's like, let's be excited. And not just 2022, but, you know, our possibilities for next week, for next month, for, you know, to, to, to flip it, right. To get to that clean slate. Like we talked about last week, we always have that capacity. Let's, you know, let's start again. I'm going to refresh my mind and come at this, you know, with, with new eyes and say, what do I want to create in this space? And sometimes, and, I, I, go ahead, Don, Norma. And when we're doing that and we're saying, what do we want to keep? We have to keep the open, keep it open at the top because what we think we're creating right now, we don't know what tomorrow brings. So that may send us in a totally different direction of what we think we're going to do right now. So being open to spirit and just always allowing, allowing and letting go, letting go of what doesn't serve us, what's not working, and opening up for the new and you know what will work. Beautiful. Yeah, because you can't see those those stones forward, right? So we, you can only see the ones that you left behind. So yeah. you can see for all we know that you know in trying to stay the old way, we miss out on a beautiful expression of you know humanity, really. And we are instrumental in that, and this is the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, did I use the, the analogy about the monkeys last week? About how you catch monkeys? I think I actually shared it with the Geneva group. Now, I don't know if this is true, but you know, like where, how they would catch monkeys in, in India and Southeast Asia, that, that they get a gourd or a jar or something like that and, and put nuts or bananas or, you know, some kind of treat for the monkey. And the monkey would stick its, its why, what do you call them? They got arms, <laughs> paws, whatever, stick it into the jar, right? grab a fist full of nuts or you know whatever fruit and then try to pull the arm out and it can't because the fist is right you know is holding it in place but that poor little monkey is just not gonna let go of that treat and that's how it gets trapped <laughs> it's sitting there you know because it doesn't want to let go of of what it's got in it you know so it entraps itself and i think we very often do that kind of thing because we hold on so tight to what we know and to the past and what we think is good for us, you know, that, that we trap ourselves in, in lives that are smaller, you know, or not fitting really of who we are. So that's part of the, the great um, internal work that we do is, is to, you know, is to start to see those things. Does this serve me or doesn't it? Do I need to let go of those treats in the jar so I can have the bigger life or I'm getting stuck right here? So I guess I didn't share that one. <laughs> no, you have not. But you know, that's the thing is the people who have lived and had the most beautiful, most expansive lives are not the ones who hold on to the treats. They're the ones that seem to be like the carefree and oh my God, what are they doing now type people. But mm -hmm. those are the ones that have the biggest lives. And again, who knows? Who knows what we're going to be doing after this? So why not have fun while you're here? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And I, isn't that, I think that was one of the last points about this idea of, um, you know, of one, one journey, many paths and, and the infinite invisible is, you know, that you're in it when you're in joy. 
right? Like when you're experiencing joy, that is when you're you're living your your highest self. Right? So give ourselves permission to do that. And get all the stuff out of the way that keeps that from happening. Is that why you keep joy on your shoulder? It must be. It just <laughs> sits there. <laughs> My, my reminder, be in joy. Yes. <laughs> well, do you all, this has been delightful conversation. Do you all want to, anything in closing, Norma, we'll go, you go first. Um, well, I just want people watching and everybody that has invested in the center to just hold space and maybe do some own personal visioning um, practices to see what they see as what's nearest and best for the center. And um, definitely send us emails. If you don't reach out and call, you know, let us know what you're coming up with. Don't keep it close to your heart. Let us know. Yeah, definitely. I, I really feel just so disconnected to some people because we don't have their information. And so it's like, I just want them to just reach out and connect with us so that we can have your information so we can check in on you, make sure everything is going okay in COVID land and that you are all right, you know, cause we do worry about you guys. And, and so, you know, not everybody's on Facebook, not everybody's on, you know, or maybe some are on this and some are on that, but somehow reach out to someone within the center and say, hey, by the way, I'm still okay. And hey, I would love a visit. Cause you know, we can always make something happen. Yeah, thank you. And I, I wanna also, put the word out to people who um, maybe, as I said, will never actually set physical foot in our center, but you know, want to be part of this community to, uh, like you said, Donna, reach out, you know, give us a shout, maybe tell us some ways that you'd like to be involved. You know, we were looking at um, starting up classes again soon and, um, you know, both in person and online and whatever other things we can do. Maybe it's watching movies together. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, um, but I'm open to whatever that looks like. And if say. they're not getting any information from us, because we do have a newsletter that goes out and sometimes gives updates and asks questions and what have you. Um, and if you're not receiving anything from us and you would like to, even if you don't have anything to say per se, make sure we have your contact information, your email, so that you are included in the things that we're sending out as a center. Yes, that would be wonderful. So we're open to all of it. Please reach us on, online on the website, or you can actually in the chat, you just hit on um, CSL Ocala and then send a private message. Yes, yeah. Well, thank you, ladies. And so we wrap up this portion of things, but um, I don't want you to go yet. I want you to tell people about bowls so that, you know, for the folks who are local uh, that might want to check that out. All right, so what she's talking about is something we call sound healing, and it's where we use crystal singing bowls, Tibetan bowls, and other instruments to take you through a sound bath, where we take you like on a little roller coaster ride, and sometimes it's just a little gondola ride, but it just depends. Sometimes there's a jambe drum involved. <laughs> so we just intuitively play these instruments and take you guys on a journey with us, and it, things happen in the physical form, the physical body lets go of it when it is shaking these vibrations. And that's why something like dance is so important and so wonderful and singing is so wonderful. But if you're not somebody who's artistically inclined, it's okay. You can still feel the vibration of the musical instruments by coming to the sound feeling. And it will be on the website as well as I believe it's on Facebook. Right. And we have it uh every Wednesday there at the center. This Wednesday and then every other Wednesday from then at eight o'clock, from eight to nine. And we are COVID conscious, so you will need to bring a mask. We really appreciate that. Yeah, it's a it's a wonderful experience to feel that vibration as it moves through you. And like you said, Donna just kind of shakes things loose. You know, it's it's a, a great midweek kind of uh, pick me up. So I encourage anybody who's here local to, to take advantage of that because people have tried to steal away Donna and Norma in other communities <laughs> because they offer this amazing healing modality. Diving into doing it online. So what was that? We're going to be diving into doing it online. So mm -hmm. we're going to be working on that. So we'll see how that 
transpires. <laughs> we, have sound, we have a sound check coming up. So we want to be doing it for our online community, um, our online um, retreat. So if that goes well, then we'll be able to do it more and be able to be online. Great, great. Well, thank you, ladies. I'm going to go ahead and wrap us up because we'll be meeting on Zoom for those who want to have a chat after service and just kind of check in and uh, see how you're doing and let us know your prayer requests and just kind of connect so we can see your smiling face. We would love that. So, all right, ladies, we'll see you in a little bit. Let me go ahead and close this out here. And so thank you all for, for being with us. And, um, you know, the, the center, we've got the little donate button going across the bottom. Um, we are like any other organization. We've got, uh, you know, bills to pay and, and that sort of thing. And we really would love to expand the service that we're offering. Uh, we'd love to have it be maybe more of a production, maybe, where we can have uh, some other people join us and and up the quality of, of what we're doing and what we're offering. And um, additional funds would be very helpful for that, as well as, you know, the traditional upkeep of the building. And so we appreciate every gift, every tithe that you all give, as well as the people who who give also of their time and their talent to keep up the center. And so let's see what I want to say here. We're going to add our affirmation. And I invite you to say this for yourself and know that it's the truth. And whether you're giving to the Center for Spiritual Living or you're giving to some other organization, you need to give. You really need to give. And if you're, if you're broke, if you're having trouble, that may be why. Maybe you're not giving enough. But, you know, we just encourage you to give to the places where you feel spiritually fed. And that kind of keeps the ball rolling, right? As you give, you receive. And you think about it as, as planting seed. And so um, if you want to plant your seeds with the Center for Spiritual Living on Cala, we would greatly appreciate that. So here is the affirmation. It is the nature of life to give of itself. As it is the tree's nature to bear fruit and the flower's nature to bloom, it is my nature to share the gifts of my time, talent, and treasure. I participate in the divine flow of life, giving generously and receiving abundantly. I am blessed and I am a blessing. I am so very grateful. And so each one of you is a blessing to us. And uh, oh, I wanna tell you, I almost forgot that this week is the um, CSL convention. It's actually, we're doing it online every year. It kind of flip-flops. So last year it was in Colorado and this year it is online. And we actually have a ticket for one more person to participate in the convention. If you are interested in checking it out, it goes from Monday till Thursday. And uh, we have a discounted ticket for anyone from our group who might be interested in participating and checking out convention, you'll get to see some of our national leaders and participate in some of the workshops. And it really is, it's, it's worth the time and, um, you know, and the effort to, to be there. Last year's convention was, was just amazing. And I got to go right before COVID shut everything down. So I'm excited and I'm participating this year. So I invite you and hope uh, at least a few of you will join us. And so let's see if there's anything else here, any more comments? All right, let me put up the Zoom information here for those who may want to join us on the Zoom discussion afterward. Let's see, there is the information. It is also in the chat, I believe. So I look forward to seeing some of you on Zoom in a, in a little bit. And I think that's it. Let me see one more comment here, make sure we got everything. Yes, welcome to everyone and uh, have a fabulous week. The light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. And I just affirm that all is well in your life. 
as you go forward in this week and that any challenges that you may be facing become stepping stones to your greater yet to be. I look forward to seeing you on Zoom or next week. Love and blessings.